Morning all. Let's have a 15 minute game this morning. Let's see how we go. So, um, okay. I think the commentaries are still quite, quite good compared to the, um, the five minute games, which are more about uh, time pressure. So, um, yeah, I think this is quite an interesting innovation uh, for the channel. Uh, also, uh, we can look at title players while we're waiting to, as a commentator. One of the downsides, it takes longer to get a game. So let's have a look at um, this is Terra no Noza or something. I think he's playing. Uh, he's got the hat icon by his nickname, Tilda. Uh, okay, so um, what's going on here? Seems, oh, I was going to say okay, but losing could have lost c6 from queen a8. And this pass pawn is dangerous anyway, it's been herded through or not, as the case may be. Now a6, oh. Oh, the opponent's only got like eight seconds, it's going to be a time win. Bishop's controlling a8, so the queen needs to get behind d pawn. Or that pawn, queen e6. That looks like time win. Ah, that could be tricky for an overloaded bishop. King's coming to the rescue. End of game. Oh, white does a lot with two seconds. Once clock's not moving, it's a bit naughty. How is white's clock not moving? <laughs> um, what was the opening in that out of interest then? Another kind of fence. And uh, that's interesting. Quick d6, queen b6. Too hot for white here. Yeah. Uh, ah, we've got a game. Okay, Pete for close that. Uh, that gambit yesterday, whatever it was called, I, I took it from the ICC description. It was quite good fun. Repeat it today. Someone mentioned knight g5 and casting kingside. Clearly that's not possible here. Knight <laughs> g5. <laughs> Position sensitive advice, yeah. Um, as, as as chess usually is. So, uh, what if, if I've unpinned those, so what about castles here in knight g5? And there might be rook f6 as a unsubtle threat. If um, bishop f5, there's rook f5 for f7. But will he play bishop f5? If he takes, I can castle queenside and use that g file, surely. Castle queenside, I think. Okay, he's going to castle queenside. Fine. Get both pawns together. What about knight g5 here? It's knight b6. So knight f7 that clearly doesn't work. Uh, knight e6, I don't think so. Or bishop e6. Ah! Two pawns. 
queen and rook. Knight g5, knight b6, bishop e6, takes, takes, queen moves, knight takes d8. Broken the diagonal a bit, so queen f5 or bishop f4 could be more dangerous than usual. Maybe bishop f4 there. Interesting. That's an interesting imbalance, and normally I wouldn't go for that, but it sort of weakens the king in this position. And this black's going to get a really good um, blockade on d5, which is possible. It's probably worth a punt. I wonder. Knight takes d8, queen takes. Or is it just total rubbish? What's the alternative here anyway? If I retreat the bishop, it's just knight d5. Comfortable game, so I think I'm going to do it. Controversial. It's two pawns. Anyway, uh, although I was a pawn down, but um, bishop f4 is not anything here so I just take but then we reach a crunch position I can get the bishop on this diagonal knight d5 bishop g3 bishop d6 maybe queen f5 or bishop g3 and if it takes then I get the h file knight d5 bishop g3 I think I'll go for what is the bishop doing otherwise on e3 it's not doing anything Uh, play this. So if it takes his healing my pawn structure. So now if I can just get a rook in and queen f5, try and prove the advantage of the rook. Rooks on the e file here, which I've kind of taken away the opponent's pawns from. Fortunately, queen f5 is queen d7, my queen's hanging, otherwise bishop d6 will be good. So rookie one, right, rookie one here, not afraid of exchanging one pair of rooks. I want to try and get in queen f5, which is potentially dangerous in this position. In fact, queen f5 here, there's queen d7, there's no rookie 8, so I think I'll take here for a sec. Pawns are coming together anyway, which could be useful for g4 or something later. G4, G5, Queen F5, or just Queen takes H7, or Queen H7 here. If I want to nab a pawn, Queen F5, Queen E7 is Rookie 8. So Queen F5 first, maybe to move the King. And his Queen G5 is a threat, I see. So leaving his Rook hanging. Might be a good idea. Queen f5 check, king b8, queen h7. If queen g5 is rooks hanging now. King b1, say takes, takes, queen g3, as example. He's protecting g7 there. I could play check, king moves, rook takes, then queen takes. So I'm hitting g7. Or just rook takes and queen h7, if that's any advantage. Keeps the king usefully, you know, maybe for queen h3s. King a bit exposed. Queen h7 immediately is also interesting as well. Queen g5 check, there's f4. And his rook's hanging. So, in fact, f4 there. It's going to be handy anyway because it takes queen check, king moves rook, or queen f7 there. So this queen h7, in fact, is also getting another pawn. Queen g5, there's f4. There's no rook e1 there. I can take the queen, it's not getting mated. If queen g, f if. So the queen would have to go and protect the rook. So if he takes the rook first, takes queen g5, f4, queen g3, queen f4, 
queen g8, king c7. Queen f7 is dangerous there. Surely. So I think I will just take. I can throw in a check to stop queen g5s altogether. Isn't it rookie says queen d7. And then the rook versus the two knights there. Can't be that bad. But as previously noted though, rook takes e1, queen g5. There's f4. Now queen g3, queen g8, king c7. Queen f7, there's knight d7. I don't like losing g3 particularly. So maybe this ending is actually better. Queen f5, queen d7, there's rook. There isn't a rook e8. <laughs> that ending there, couldn't my rook attack g7? So I think I'm going to go for that. I'll take the queen off take the rook off, try and get my rook to h7, so there's two pawns, back to two pawns here for the rook versus the two knights, so queen d7 I take, take on e1, if you take with the knight, oh no, The rook hasn't got an entrance on the e-file, I think it's going to have to be on the h-file to h7. Okay, so I'll go for this ending. So, how are the two knights doing versus the rook? It could be better for him, I'm not sure. b3, if knight here then there's c4, so I can kick Hopefully I can kick these knights a little bit away from the centre with b3 and c4. So I don't want to weaken my pawns too much. So knight c e3 does c4. Now here, yeah, why not? Also, g4 now would deprive knight f5. Ah, okay. Okay, I think king d2, and if rook knight a2, there's rook a2. But there is knight f5, which starts to get that false two pawns. So the knights are fighting back. Whoops. But actually, uh, knight takes there, there's king c3. So if I played rook h1, there's knight g3, there's rook h7, there's knight f5. Uh, the knights are fighting back. Ouch. Knight f5 is a big pain. Unless king c3. Could that save the day as knight takes d4 for knight c2? Knight takes d4, there's rook d1 actually, uh, c5. As rook takes, takes, king takes b4. But in this position, surely just rook a1, knight b4, rook a7, knight a6, rook a8, knight c8, swallowing my rook. Hmm. Do I do that anyway? No, I think, I think g4 here. And then rook h1. Let's, let's use the rook for g7. Two connected pass pawns here. So stop knight f5 anyway. Okay, now I'll get the rook to h7. So pawn, the knights have grabbed the pawn, but I'm one step away from creating a pass pawn off the g4. I want to get rook h7 in. Then maybe f4, f5, g5. Then it will start to be critical <clears throat> if I can start to move these pawns. Mm. 
So rook h7 here. That's king f6. Um, I don't know if c5 is any use. Or rook h8 for a moment. I think rook h8. Just to have some ideas of rook a8 maybe. In fact, I don't want to get my king too involved with the rook for forks. Um, but the king might be handy here to use somehow. How? King f king e three. Nasty knight c two. The king's not going anywhere. King c three. Where's the knight going? If it goes to a six, maybe rook a eight there. There's no knight c eight. King's away. If the king goes over the over here, knight c eight's the less effective. So rook a8, there's no knight c8. Um, a6, rook a7, and I'm threatening c5. Hmm. Okay. So is g5 here is out of the question? Or king c3? I think king c3, back to king c3. That seems okay. Any knight f6, or maybe b4 here. Just to gain a bit of space. Maybe getting the king to a5. F four ninety six F five Knight moves somewhere Rook H one F four ninety six F five These these pawns are too loose I think force A six and get the king to B six maybe In fact get ready for King King maneuver to A five I think D4 is a bit vulnerable here actually, knight e6, king c3, oh dear. No, I think the king needs to be uh, handled with care. Let's put that back for a sec because of d4. See what happens here if I can force a6. Force weakness. Right. Now, a bit of pressure on that that knight. So I can get the king to b6 here without knight e6 being so dangerous. That's not really the case. Because uh, King F7 is knight E6 all the time. Whoa! Okay, H6 is a bit loosened. Right, I'll go for that. If I get Rook H6, Rook H5. Maybe the King can go to F5 now. down aren't I really but what about ah he's off of the draw it's tempting rook e5 six minutes I can get can I not get a pass pawn anywhere 
96 there's rookie 4 so can I not can't see a clear break the knights are pretty good I could try and push the position to the limits I can sack d4 king b3 knight 6 king a4 knight d4 king a5 Knight f3, there's rook f1. I get to a5. And then get the king to b6. Try that. Try and go for a loss. <laughs> Stroke win. No, um, actually, I'm not really sure. Does he let my king go to a4 here? That's one question. Well, he's just got b6. There's knight e6, there's rook e4. Knight d6, what about rook d1? Oh, I think I'm going to offer a draw. I'm going to check it out. It's getting short on time. I'm not sure it was that sound. Yeah. Um. Knight seem, seem to be holding up. So, uh, yeah, it was just an idea anyway. Just bishop e6. So, uh, losing that pawn. Uh, knight's quite solid. Here, yeah, holding the fort back, I think. If my king ventures over, the problem is, well, c4 is one problem, d4 is the other problem. <laughs> so, my king can't really go over here. The rook can't really do much there because it's always going to be blocked. Uh, maybe by that knight or by c5 if that knight was used. So, yeah, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks so much.